Hey guys, welcome back to the third video in this uh, writing CAD routines from scratch series. So basically we've been doing a lot of work with these polygonal meshes and writing STL files. And we've used this um, web-based viewer to view our STL files in the browser. That's nice and all, but it's not really self-contained enough. I want to be able to do this in our own function, in our own code. So uh, goodbye viewstl.com. And so that's the main objective of today's video, basically just a rendering engine. So what will that entail? Basically the objective at the end of the day today is a window, X11 window I should say, so Linux, um, that we can draw our house on using OpenGL calls. And we're gonna write our own vertex shader to handle all the math that goes into you know, computing this these vertex locations uh, in, in the shader itself. So that'll be fun to do. So basically when it comes to rendering something, you have two options. You can either do a perspective projection or a parallel projection. So what's the difference? Well, perspective projection, obviously things that are closer are bigger than things that are further away. And parallel projection basically means that no matter how far away something is from you, it's always going to be, look. It's going to look the same, the same size. Um, and in, in, I guess, more mathematical terms, I guess if you had a viewing plane, all the, the points would have a, a parallel line traced onto the screen that you can render. So everything would look um, you know, as it does at any distance. So in terms of um, you know, if you want to make a game or you want to make uh, 3D models for like a video or something, you want to use a perspective projection, obviously, because that's what you see with your eyes. But if you're an engineer and you work on CAD for designing uh, products, you really should want to stay in a parallel projection. And that's what we will do in this video series. Also, it turns out that a parallel projection is, you know, a thousand times easier to implement. You know, there's, the way we're going to do it, there's no need for any rotation matrices, there's no need for any kind of, you know, trigonometry or sine and cosine. Everything we're going to do is simple matrix algebra, dot products, and cross products. So let me explain some of the math here uh, with a simple drawing. Forgive my penmanship, I'm doing this with a mouse. So let's say you have a, a global axis, you know, x, y, and z global, and you have some object somewhere in space with a point on the object that you want to be the center of the view. Call that, that the look at point, we'll call that x0 y0, z0. That's, that's terrible, that's terrible. And then any point on the object, we'll say that's gonna be x, y, and z, because we're gonna figure out how that relates to a, to a uh, projection in the future. So we'll say any point on the object we're going to say is x, y, z. And that's what we wanna be able to translate onto a sort of screen, or like a viewing plane like this, and we're going to have an axis system on this viewing plane with, uh, I guess we'll call this one U1, this one U2, and we'll call the perpendicular you know, cross product of what U1 and U2, we'll call that one U3. And then if you want to trace you know, this point X, Y, Z onto this, it will co correlate to the point x prime, y prime, and z prime. Hope you can read that. <laughs> and so at this point, we're almost done. We also need to, to be able to describe where this viewing plane is in space. So the origin of this u1, u2, u3, we'll call that, I guess, x1, y1, z1. Or we can just call this one the uh, look at, and we'll call this one the look from. How about that? It's a little bit easier. And now, actually, the, the math that goes into computing how to project uh, this object or any point on this object onto this plane is extremely simple. Basically, what you're doing is you're taking the x, y, and z component, and you're 
deconstructing them into U1, U2, and U3 components in this axis system. So it's, it's very simple. Um, I guess I'll make some, I'll write some matrix algebra. So let's say you, you want to compute x prime, y prime, z prime. That's uh, it's simply going to be, like I said, the dot product. So it's going to be u1, which by the way is three components, u2, again, three components. It's going to be in 3D space, and u3, three components. This is a terrible, terrible job drawing, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you're multiplying that by not x, y, and z, but rather because you want x0, y0, and z0 to be the center of where you're looking, we're going to actually take the difference between x minus x0, y minus y0, and z minus z0. So this, multiply this 3 by 3 times a 3 by 1, you get a 3 by 1, and you're done. And actually, by the way, this z prime value is irrelevant because when you're drawing on a 2D plane, you don't care about the z coordinate. The z coordinate is irrelevant. All you care about is the x and the y coordinate. So honestly, you can throw out this whole last equation for this linear algebra. Um, so with that being said, let's get into the actual code. I want to break this up into a few different pieces. Um, first, I want to just render a, a blank screen, uh, a blank X11 window. We'll do that first. Then we'll do all the math that goes into you know computing these values, and then we'll actually render it with OpenGL. I hope that makes sense. So I'll be back in a few seconds. I'll put the code together. OK, so I put some code together really quick from a previous project. Um, just to open up a blank X11 window, it's not too much um, work, but it is a little bit confusing, so I don't want to go through line by line. I'm not even sure. I don't, I'm not an expert in this field, so I'm just going to brush over it. Basically, we have to include some extra things, um, X11, obviously, and some uh, GL libraries, as well as um, the standard Boolean library to use true and false. And then we're going to type def a context for OpenGL. We'll get into that a little bit later, but we need it to compile, so we're just going to describe it right now. Um, then I made this draw function. I'll get back to that in a second. And in our main function here, I added a, three lines. So the first line is look at, float. Second line is look from, float. And the last is a draw call. So obviously look at and look from correlate back to you know, these values here, look from and look at. Those are you know, required to parametrize. And, um, the other properties, other parameters we have are um, the height, the width and the height of the, the screen that we're drawing to, as well as the same basic four parameters that we've passed into the previous functions as well. Um, just so we can actually have something to, something to draw, you know. <laughs> so that will be some parameters as well. So this draw function is pretty simple. Like I said before, you have a width and a height. You pass in some of those geometric parameters, and you have a, a few different few lines of code here that you have to go through. You're making a display, you're making a window, you're opening the display in the window with some simple properties. Uh, width, and, width and height are both properties there. This is also location on the screen, I believe. Some attributes that you're you know, defining for the screen and how you will draw to it. Um, long story short, eventually you, you map the window to a, dis uh, to a display, so you map the to do together. You give it a name. Here I give it the name Viewer. You can do whatever you'd like. And then we're making this a uh, OpenGL current context. Um, and then we have a while loop here so it doesn't immediately close when we run the program. So I just checked this should compile. To compile it, you have a couple more command line options to run. You have to include X11, LGL. We'll need math in a few seconds, if not now. And then we have some extension prototypes to include. Um, so we'll, we'll do that. So it should compile just fine. And now if you run the, the code, we have a window. So this is a blank X11 window, bare minimal uh, work done to get it. And so in the next step, I'm going to write up all the code we need to encode this mathematics. 
So I'll do that and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I just put in the code. I think it seems to be okay. I want to also point out that I did add this library of math but H. Well, we will need that uh, coming up. So um, first thing you'll see, I have some shaders. I'll get into those in a second. Uh, but more importantly, I have the actual linear algebra we just kind of talked about to define the u1, u2, and the u3 vectors. So u3 is easy to define. u3 is actually simply the vector from x0, y0, z0, or look at, to, let me get a different color, to x1, y1, z1, or look from. So we can very simply um, calculate the u3. So here I have u3 equals look at 0 minus look from 0, look at 1 minus look from 1, look at 2 minus look from 2. So you're taking the three components and subtracting. Very simple. Now, in terms of u1 and u2, this is obviously you can come up with an infinite number of u1 and u2 uh, components that the cross product of which will give you u3, right? You have these two, you can have these two, right? There's so many that you can make an infinite number. So I basically, I, I picked one for uh, u1, uh, basically to take the negative component of, of the u3, y, and x, and given them inverted. So basically that will give us a value like this with no z component. So it will have no out of plane component and it will have this value in terms of x and, and y. And now for u2, we can very simply compute that in terms of the cross product. I won't bore you with details, we did it last time. So simply uh, multiplying um, and in this, this, this case you're actually adding two products together. So you compute u1, u2, and u3 with a very simple matrix algebra. Um, next, what I did was I actually normalized those axes, so I didn't want to have a bunch of really long values for u1, u2, and, and u3. I wanted them all to be unit length, um, that's pretty sensible. So to, to do that, I simply get, got the magnitude of each, and I divided each component by that magnitude. Simple stuff. And then I have a very simple debugging uh, print here giving us the look from, look at vectors, as well as u1, u2, and u3. That's all I did so far as um, the u1, u2, and u3. Let's get into the actual shaders. That's the real meat of how this works. So shaders are how um, basically OpenGL draws things to the screen. And it, it does it in a way that's very parallelizable. parallelizable. So if you can pass in uh, variables to be computed at every single you know, vertex, it can do those all at the same time. And so to do that, you can kind of define inline code like this for a vertex shader and a fragment shader. Um, one of them being for positional data, one being for color data. And basically, you can compile these at runtime in your in your code, and you can kind of uh, attach those to the to the program and use those to render your your screen. So um, how it works in particular here, I'm, you're, I'm taking as an input in a vector three of position. That's basically going to be the position of each vertex or interpolated value between vertices. Then I have these things called uniform. It's basically a uniform is something that doesn't change um, between function call of this vertex shader. So basically, um, Vectors u1, u2, and u3, for example, are going to be the same no matter what point you're rendering. You're still going to have the same view plane defined by u1, u2, and u3. Uh, in the same way, you also will have the same um, value for look at as well as a scaling parameter. So we can say how far, you know, how large we want this view plane to be. We want it to be this big, we want it to be this big. We want a scaling parameter just to you know zoom in and zoom out basically what we're looking at. So the actual um, math here is quite simple. So 
we're defining an, an output, which is called GL position, which doesn't have to be called that, but that's what it's called here, which is a, uh, a four-dimensional vector. The only ones that actually, the only primitives that actually matter in this vector are the first two, um, and those are the simply the x and y location on the screen. So we have to give some math to the vertex shader to take in, you know, u1, u2, u3, look at, as well as x, y, and z, to give us x prime, y prime, and z prime. And actually, we only care about the first two, as we mentioned, x prime and y prime. So basically. The vertex shader is responsible for doing this calculation here. And remember, we, we've, we've just computed what u1, u2, and u3 are, and we're passing them into the vertex shader. x0, y0, and z0, those are a look at um, vector, and they're also passed in. So very simply, we're just doing a dot product between u1 and the three components, subtracted, u2, and also u3, to compute x prime and y prime. So it's also z prime. Uh, so it's very simple. And also I've added in a scaling parameter, as I mentioned, that we'll, we'll multiply this multiplication by to, to get a scaled result. So let me show you how that looks in the code. It's, a, it's quite long, a uh, single line, obviously. I don't know why I did that, but simple dot product. So uh, the x component times the subtracted x plus the y component of u1 times the subtracted y plus the component of u1 times subtracted z. That's simply, you know, that's simply this times this. And that will give us this component. And you can imagine the same thing occurs for y prime with uh, this multiplied by this to give us y prime. So very simple math there, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. And then uh, for z, or I should say I have the scaling parameter here for x and y, for z, if you look at the end of this line here, I have a zero, and the last component is, uh, is one. That might be the alpha value, like opacity, I, I think that's what it is. I left that at one. So by itself, this vertex shader should compute for us the locations on the view plane of any x, y, and z um, vertex data given these inputs. So x zero, y zero, z zero, as well as the, the u1, u2, and u3. So that should work just fine. Um, the fragment shader is something different. That's basically just the, as I said before, the colors. So in this case, I didn't put any kind of variability for color. Everything here um, is green. So this is RGB, so zero for R, zero for B, and then uh, one for green. So everything will be drawn in green. Now, at this point, it won't do anything if I were to compile this. It would probably not even compile. I have to add in some more functions to you know, compile these shaders and attach them to the program. So I'll do that, and I'll show you the result. OK, I've just added in that code. It's quite a bit, actually. So um, we have to compile the shaders. So we're basically doing just that for the vertex shader. We're checking in the compile status in case there's an error. Um, there shouldn't be, but if there is, we'll see it here. It'll print out. Um, we're attaching both the vertex and fragment shader to the program. And um, this point is also important. So basically, in order to pass these values into the, uh, the shaders, we have to do so in a certain data type. Um, and it's not, not quite what we had before. We had a, a two-dimensional array before for the nodes and, um, and the elements themselves. In this case, we actually have to do so in a, in a linear fashion. So it's, it's like a one-dimensional array. So it's very simple to do that. We just have to remap everything in terms of um, a one-dimensional array for the vertices and the indices. Another thing you have to do is you have to uh, bind these buffers to um, to actual buffers. So you bind these value these these arrays to um, to buffers, and then you are uh, passing them in 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 this way here, or giving buffer data into the functions. I won't go into the details. You can look that up on, on your own. Uh, next we have to actually get our 
uniform variables from the shaders. So if you remember from the top, we had these vertex shader source and the fire shader source. These uniform values, we have to be able to pass values into the shaders to use them. So we have to be able to pass in U1, U2, U3 scaling and look at in order to use them in our um, in our function there. So it's not quite, it's not very hard to do that. You simply have to use this get uniform location, U1, U2, U3 scaling and look at, save them as glint values, and now you can um, use gl uniform at every uh, iteration of your render loop to pass in values. So in this case, if you look in the while loop, we're passing in um, into the U1 uniform in the shader, these three values, U10, U11, U12. Same thing goes for U2, U3 scaling and look at. So in that way we can kind of, um, if we wanted to in the future, you know, change the viewing um, plane, you know, maybe with the mouse or with the keyboard to rotate around the object in some way, um, we can do that, you know, in the render loop. That's why it's here. And then simply we're, we're drawing the elements um, as, as, as triangles and we're actually doing it as, um, as lines. If we wanted to draw it with a solid face, we could make this a GL fill, but here we're just drawing the, the wire frame, so we'll leave it as GL lines. Um, so at this point, I mean, I'll give you the code on, on GitHub. You can take a look at it yourself, run it yourself, but if we were to run this, oh, we're sorry, comp compile it first and run, we get a, a, you know, a view. This is our model. If you don't believe me, well, I can, I can prove it to you. Here is the um, browser view, and we're looking at it kind of front on like this. And here's you can see the front of the triangle, the top of the, the top of the, the house there, and there we go. We have, we have a, a working, you know, render. And here you can see the um, the points that we're looking from and looking at. We're looking right down. Looks like the uh, the y axis here. Now. I can prove to you that we can we can change those values. If I go down to uh, the definition of look at and look from, if I look from, I don't know, let's say 5.5, that should be um, at the corner. If we recompile and rerun, you see this. Looks a little bit weird, huh? This is actually the view from the side like this. So you're looking at the corner of the house, basically. And now, you know, obviously we could add more functionality to this. We could have the mouse rotate, you know, left, right, up, down. You can use the keyboard maybe to, to zoom in and out. Maybe we could use the mouse to click on certain features and change the color. Many things can, uh, can be made to work from this framework. So that's all I have in this video. Basically we made a, a, a working renderer in only a, a few minutes here. So I'll see you in the next one.